Um, in this video, we're going to talk about how to make a force diagram uh, with a simple situation. A force diagram is our diagrammatic representation of the interaction between an object of interest and other objects in the world. So we start with a situation. Ah, let's see, Smartboard doesn't play very nicely with the screen capture. But consider the following situation. A man pulls a rope attached to a crate across a very smooth surface. With a force diagram, we are analyzing only one object at a time. Um, so it's very important that you choose or use the given object of interest when you make a force diagram. Uh, the object we're discussing is called the object of interest. There's, here's the four steps of a force diagram. Um, it's simple. Sketch a situation. A man pulls a crate attached to a rope across a very smooth surface. That's a good enough sketch. Now, it's important that you circle the object of interest because we're separating the whole universe into the object of interest and everything else. So carefully circle it. I usually make a dotted line when I do this circle. There it is. There's our crate. That's the object of interest. Now, I want you to list interactions with the object of interest, please. What's an interaction? Um, an interaction is a push or a pull. And with only one exception, something has to be touching the object of interaction, the object of interest to push or pull on it. So let's go through everything that's touching the object of interest. What's touching? Well, let's see, there's the floor. What else is touching it? The rope. Now here's tricky. Is the man interacting with the crate? Strictly speaking, no. The man is not touching the crate. You can't interact with something without touching it if you're a person. Now, there is one thing that's interacting with this crate. There's one thing that's exerting a push or a pull on this crate without touching it. That's the Earth. The Earth, through the force that we call gravity, pulls on everything near to it. So, uh, let's check. Is there anything else touching? No. Anything else interacting? No. So we have one, two, three objects interacting with the object of interest. Cool. That's the hardest part of the, well, that's one of the hard parts of the force diagram. Now, we're ready to make the actual force diagram. Step three, dot label. The dot represents our object of interest. This reminds us that we're treating the object of interest as a particle. Remember that? The size, the orientation, the shape of the object of interest is not important. We're simplifying it as a point particle. All right. We need a line for every interaction. Let's take the first one, the floor. What direction is the floor pushing on the crate? Well, I guess we can say that it's pretty obvious that the force that the floor exerts on the crate is upwards. So we put, we put an F for force, and we label the two objects participating in this interaction. That's the force of the floor on the crate. Now, the next interaction is the rope. What direction is that pushing or pulling on the crate? Always make the force diagram match the sketch. So that would be pulling to the right. It's unfortunate that I've written crate there. But if this happens to you, you can do what I'm going to do. Do, 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 do. Just erase. That's right, crate on this side. And there's some amount of a pull force of the rope on the crate. Yes, I know you keep writing on crate, on crate, on crate, but stick with me. That will be helpful. Our last interaction. What's the direction of the pull of the earth on the crate? That's down. How long should we draw the arrow? When we're drawing a force diagram, you should always think about how long these arrows should be compared to each other. Um, with a moment's reflection, we should see that the floor should be pushing up on the crate just as hard as the earth is pulling down on the crate. So let's make the force of the earth on the crate down the same length as the force of the floor on the crate is up. Um, 
Note that we are writing the force of the Earth on the crate because each of these arrows represents an interaction, and an interaction is always between two physical objects that you can see and touch. So force of Earth on crate is our preferred way of saying this rather than force of gravity on crate or something else. Um, so that's excellent. We have, let's verify that we've got an arrow for every interaction. And let's preview the next sort of thing we're doing. Are there any forces exerted on the crate that are not balanced by other forces? And what does that mean for the crate? All right, we're going to stop our test.